So now that we have most of the functionality for an AI in our game, we can start polishing up a little. Um, we will have to make sure that the enemy despawns whenever we kill her. We kill her, um, and we will need to make sure that the enemy respawns when he's dead, so that we can play again. And then later, you can of course add some more lives to him, so he can only respawn x amount of times. Um, besides that, there is this little bug that allows us to double hit the enemy. Um, if we jump up here and hit and turn, then I can hit her two times um, if my collider exits. As you saw here, I just hit her two times. If my collider exits her and enters her again. So we will also have to fix that little bug. But let's make sure that we can actually despawn and everything. So first of all, we have to go to our characters, uh, character script. Um, there. And here we have to make a death function. So I think we have an abstract here. So make it public abstract void called death. So this function will be Im implement the way that each character dies. So our enemy will need an implementation of this. So right click on character, quick actions. Apparently you can just click out here. And then it has implemented the death function. If it doesn't do this, you can write this code yourself. Um, the enemy's death function is very simple. We simply destroy the game object. So you say destroy game object. And that's it. Now the enemy is dead, so we just need to destroy her. Uh, the next thing we'll need to do is to implement the player's uh, death animation. So, uh, or the player's death functionality. So go to the player and go to the top here and click on the light bulb and implement the abstract, abstract class. And here we need to do a little more because the player, there's a different th some different things we need to do for the player. Uh, we will need to make sure that the rigid body is not moving. So my rigid body dot velocity equals vector two dot zero. So now we're sure that he doesn't move when we respawn or die. We have to say my animator dot set trigger idle. So that we go from the death animation into the idle state because we need to respawn, remember? And then we need to say health equals and then the start health, let's just say 15, ah, let's just say 30 now. We can always make a variable that holds standard health. And his transform that position is equal to his start position. There we go. So now we have a death function we can use to respawn him. Um, what else? Also, when we die, we jump off the cliff somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. It's a long time since I looked at it. Um, here. Up here, we are basically dying also when we our Y position is less than minus 14. So we can just say death here, basically. So now he should be able to respawn when he dies still. So if I jump off the cliff now, did I remember to save? If I jump off the cliff, uh, he should still respawn now. Let's see if I jump out here. Boom. And then he lands again. So it still works. We just made sure that uh, it, it, it changed the... We, we just made sure he, it used the death animation. It says down here that there's no param parameter called idle. And that's because it's idle with non-capital I. Like so. And let's see what happens now. If I play the game and jump out here, die, then it respawns. And now it works without any warning over here. So this will prevent us from uh, landing in a death, uh, respawning with a death animation, that idle thing we just made. Okay, so now we have the functions, but we will need to call them somewhere. And we can call them from our animator. Because we can make a death behavior that will make sure that our enemy despawns and our player respawns. So add behavior, call it death behavior, and create an add. And open it up when you have created it.
So we will need a timer that decides how long time our enemy and our player should be dead before they actually um, or before they actually respawn. So private float, uh, call it death cooldown. What should we call it? We call it respawn time. I know the enemy doesn't respawn, but that's it. Uh, private float death timer. How long time has the enemy or player been dead? Then we go here on enter um, and uncomment this, and we say death timer equals zero. So reset the timer, and the respawn time should always be what should it be? It should be five. Let's say five. Then we go to update and uncomment this and we say death timer this is exactly the same thing as we do for the attack in our enemy um, is plus equals time to delta time there we go and then we say if our death timer is larger or equal to our respawn time then we say animator that get component that's not what I want to do that get component character because the function is in the character which allows us to call it like character instead of specifying if it's an enemy or a player dot uh, death ah there we go so now we will update all the time and at some point our time is death time is larger than our respawn time which is five and then we will die and it, we will call the death function let's see let's try the player first um, let's just give him less health uh, player um, where's his health it's down here somewhere there let's just say that he has 10 health just to test this out so he goes and jumps and jumps and jumps and gets hit and then he dies and let's see if he respawns after five seconds and there we go now we just respawned okay so it works on our player and uh, we'll also need to s see if it works on our enemy i'm just going to save here so it doesn't crash or anything um so let's try to jump up and kill the enemy one <laughs> now i have no i don't have enough health to kill her um i could increase my health let's see one Now I died again. Let's just wait for respawn. Because apparently I don't want to increase my health. Two. And then she died. Let's see if she despawns after five seconds. And she didn't despawn. Okay. So we have a problem here. She doesn't despawn. Let's figure out what's wrong. And it makes sense that she doesn't despawn actually. Um, I forgot to add, <clears throat> sorry. I forgot to add the behavior to the en enemy. So click on the enemy, go to the death and add behavior and select the death behavior, of course. Uh, it just hit me that we never did that. So I'm just gonna take my player and increase his health to 50 or something again. Let's, whoa, that was his speed, <laughs> oops. Um, it was the health I wanted to give him 50 in. And let's see here. Let's try to kill her. Now she's dead. Let's see if it despawns. And there we go. So now the enemy actually despawns when we kill her. <clears throat> um, so now you can have more enemies in your level and you can kill them. And then you can also uh, despawn them, of course, when they die. Unless you want them laying around on the ground constantly. The next thing we'll have to fix is the double hit thing. And I talked earlier about that we could um, add a timer so that the enemy can't take damage all the time. But an easier fix is actually, as, as far as I think, um, would be to make sure that when the player attacks the enemy, it simply disables the collider when it has hit the, the enemy once. So this will uh, not allow us to change direction to hit him twice. Let's see what we can do to disable the collider when, when the enemy gets hit. So to do so, we can create a new script and attach it to our sword colliders. 
So let's go to our scripts and right click, create and make a new script called Sword Collider. And take the script and attach it to your collider. There we go. And to the player collider as well. And then we have to make sure that we disable this if it hits something. So first of all, we need to make a um, private string called, um, what should we call it, target. And we will serialize this one so that we can write it from outside. So let's call it target tag actually. So then we make an void on trigger enter 2D and we make a collider 2D as a parameter because we need that. And call it other. And in here we say if other dot tag equals target tag. Well then we say get component collider 2D uh, dot enabled equals false. There we go. So if we hit something, we simply just disable our collider. So let's try to save this and jump back into Unity um, and take our sword collider and write the tag called um, sword because this is the enemy sword. sword. No, sorry, um, it's the player, of course. I got a little confused. So if the sword collider on the enemy hits the player, it will be disabled. And the enemy is not tagged, so we need to tag him as an enemy. So right click and add a tag. Click the plus, write enemy. Click on the enemy again and select the tag. Uh, and then we can click on the player. Uh, the player sword collider and right enemy. So if the player sword collider hits the enemy, well, then we're done. We need to disable it. Um, so that's basically it, I think. Let's try to run this. And we jump. Let's see. Hit. Um, let's just give myself a little more health. Um, health 50. Let's see here. Actually, just want to test if this works, so we can click on the enemy and let's click on the player here and enable gizmos. Now I should be able to see the colliders, as you can see here. The collider is up. Let's see if I hit the enemy; it should be disabled right away. It's hard to see, but it gets disabled because you can't see it. Um, let's see if we can do the double attack, just to make sure it doesn't uh, that this does work. Um, before I could jump onto him, attack and then turn. And you can see that it only takes one one hit now, even though I turn around right away. At least I, I can't do the double attack anymore, so this fix should work. Um, you can go to the world and enable your background again, if that's what you want, because now we are done uh, adding stuff to it. Um, I think this is a kind of a good base to stop, or a good uh, place to stop here. Um, I think all the things that we actually need for a, an OK AI is there. You can always add more stuff to it, like uh, jumping and other attacks and, and so on, if that's what you want. Uh, there might be some bugs still, um, but if you find any bugs or anything you would like to add, then please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, then I'll make some videos about these small things so that we can fix them. Uh, because we want this project to be as good as possible, of course. Um, what else? Um, if you also have any ideas for this tutorial or any of my other tutorials, then please let me know in the comments. Um, it could be what I want, what you want me to add to this tutorial next. Not only fixes to what we just did, but some extra features, some new things. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, remember to support me by liking my pages, like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter and subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out a lot. The more subscribers I get, the more views I get and uh, that, that's, that's very good for me. Remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page, which means that all your support is very important to me. So you can support me in different ways. You can go to the Patreon page to support me there, where you'll get some different perks like private tutoring or all my projects or you can also support me by just downloading one of my projects by clicking on the link on the screen right now. 
again thank you very much for watching